Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're tackling a really interesting leak code problem, called Construct the Minimum Bitwise Array. It's a great exercise because we'll start with a straightforward way to solve it, and then we'll discover a really clever mathematical trick to make it super fast. Let's dive in. So here's what we need to do. We are given a list of prime numbers. For each of these numbers, we need to find a smaller number. Let's call it the answer. The rule is that if we take this answer, and do a bitwise OR operation with answer plus 1, we should get our original prime number. If there are multiple answers that work, we want the smallest one. And if we can't find any number that works, we just put negative 1. Before we look at the main examples, let's understand the core operation. We are looking for a number ang such that when you OR it with angs plus 1, you get the target. Look at example A. If our answer is 1, adding 1 gives us 2. 1 OR2 gives us 3. So if our target was 3, the answer would be 1. In example B, if our answer is 4, adding 1 gives 5. 4 OR5 is 5. So if the target is 5, the answer is 4. Notice a pattern? The operation seems to fill in the last zero bit. Let's walk through the first example provided in the problem. We have a list. 2, 3, 5, and 7. First, for the number 2. It turns out there's no integer that satisfies our condition. So we return negative 1. For 3, as we saw, using 1 works because 1 OR2 is 3. For 5, the smallest number that works is 4. And for 7, the number 3 works. So our final result list is negative 1, 1, 4, 3. We're essentially working backwards to find these inputs. Just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. The logic is exactly the same everywhere. I'll be showing the full code for Java, C++, and JavaScript towards the end of the video, so stick around for that. The first approach is what we call brute force. Since the problem tells us the constraints are small, we don't need to be too fancy yet. For every prime number in our list, we can just test every possible candidate. We start a loop from 1 and go up to the number itself. For each candidate j, we calculate j orj plus 1. If it equals our target number, boom, we found it. And since we started counting from 1, the first one we find is guaranteed to be the smallest. Before we get into the code, let's talk about the real reason people fail at leak code. It's not because they can't reverse a linked list, it's because they break their daily streak. I built my daily to-do specifically to solve this. You can set solve daily leak code as a routine task. This means it reminds you to complete your routine tasks every day. It's a dedicated system to force you to be consistent which I also use to remind myself to upload these videos every day. If you're watching this channel you're trying to improve, so this tool makes sure you actually show up to do it. I also want to be 100% transparent about how this app will grow. I am an indie developer, not a big corporation. I will never take away a free feature you already use. Core features like repeating tasks remain free forever. However, as I add new server-heavy features, they will be part of the premium plan to help cover the costs of running the app. Also, the price of premium will go up every time I ship a major new feature, so the best time to get involved is right now, while it's early. Check it out at the link in the description. Okay, we've talked about the big picture and the logic, now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first, and don't worry, after that, we'll walk through the most important sections together. Alright, here is the Python code for the brute force approach. We loop through each number in our input list. Then, we have an inner loop that checks every number j starting from 1. We check the condition. Does j or j plus 1 equal our original number? If it does, we set that as our candidate and break out of the loop immediately to ensure it's the minimum. Then we just add it to our result list. Simple and effective for small numbers. Now let's look at the optimized approach which the editorial calls bitwise operation. This relies on a cool mathematical insight. When you compute ANS or ANS plus 1, what really happens in binary? It effectively finds the rightmost zero in ANS and turns it into a 1. That's it. It fills the first hole it finds. This means our target number is just the answer with one specific hole filled in. So, to reverse this, we need to take our target number and UN fill a hole, meaning we need to turn a 1 back into a 0. But wait, which one do we flip back to a 0? A number might have many ones. Since we want the minimum answer, we want to make the resulting number as small as possible. This means we want to subtract the biggest value we can. So we should look for the highest bit we are allowed to flip. The math tells us that the valid bit to flip must be part of the continuous chain of ones starting from the very bottom. So we find that chain of ones at the end of the number. Pick the highest one in that chain. 
and flip it. We have one important edge case to handle, the number 2. In binary, 2 is 1 0. Notice how the last bit is a 0. That means there is no chain of 1 starting at the bottom. Since our operation always fills a 0 to create a 1, the result must end in a 1. But 2 ends in a 0. So it's impossible to form 2 using this operation. For this specific case we just return negative 1. And here's the code for that mathematical approach. Notice how concise it is. We loop through the list again. For each number, we start with a detected D at 1. The while loop checks if the current bit is a 1. If it is, we tentatively calculate a result by subtracting D, effectively flipping that bit to 0. Then we shift D to the left to check the next bit. We keep doing this as long as we see 1s. The last valid calculation we do before hitting a 0 gives us the minimum answer because we've subtracted the largest possible power of 2 in that continuous chain. So, how fast are these solutions? As the analysis shows the brute force was okay for small numbers, but this bitwise approach is blazing fast. The time complexity is order n log m. Here, n is how many numbers we have, and log m represents the number of bits in the largest number. Since integers have a fixed number of bits like 32 or 64, this inner loop is extremely short. And for space it's incredibly efficient, using constant extra space or order 1. Alright, that covers the main solution in Python. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++ and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down step by step, but the logic is exactly the same as the bitwise approach we just discussed. Just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. Alright. As promised, here is the full solution in Java. It handles the list conversion and applies the same bitwise logic. You can pause here if you need to copy it. Next up, here is the C++ version of the solution. It uses a vector and includes the same while loop to scan the bits. Feel free to pause and review. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. Hopefully seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts regardless of your tech stack. So let's wrap it up. We looked at two great ways to solve this. The first was checking every number, which works but is slow. The second was a direct mathematical solution using binary properties. The key takeaway here is recognizing patterns. When you see bitwise operations in a problem, try writing out the binary for small examples. Often, the trick reveals itself right there. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code, it really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.